Hello and welcome to the final recap of Cruel Summer. Oh my god, you guys. The last two minutes of this show, we're going to get to it in a minute. Just in case you're wondering, for the rest of the summer, I am going to be watching season four of Elite. I'm going to be watching the new Gossip Girl. I have some book reviews coming up, one of which is The Missing Sister by Lucinda Riley and a bunch of other things because this is kind of a content junkyard after all. Feel free to subscribe and also share your recommendations for shows, movies, books down below. Okay, so back to episode 10. So these events are all happening around October 3rd. We open with the court case, as you know, Jeanette is suing Kate for defamation, and we get a flashback to 1994 to Martha Bailey's show. Kate is getting ready to go on at her mother's insistence, mostly, but we also find out that the fact that Kate named Jeanette in that interview is illegal. It's around this time where Jeanette sees this on the news that she cuts off her hair, and they don't provide much commentary, but I think we discussed it in the comments last week that she likely just wanted to strip herself of anything associated with that time, and we know that her hair definitely was one of the physical things that marked her, her transformation. In the court case timeline, Kate is panicking a little bit. She's scared of slipping up and she tells this to the person that she's been communicating with on the forum, her sister, unbeknownst to her. So when Kate is put on the stand, she lies about the circumstances of her abduction. She says that Martin offered her a lift home, he gave her a soda with some kind of roofie and then he locked her in the basement. We see her hesitate for a split second when Jeanette's lawyer asks her if she swears on an oath of the court but she maintains her story as true. And then the lawyer presents Kate's chat logs. She makes Kate read some of it and Kate has to read that she told the person on the chat that she went to Martin's willingly and that she's scared that people will doubt the rest of her story if they find that out. She also finds out that the other person on the forum is actually Ashley. And Ashley's explanation was that Kate just needed somebody to talk to. But of course, Kate feels betrayed. She was sharing her secrets and her trauma with someone who doesn't actually exist. Well, not as they presented themselves online. We get a Jamie redemption arc this episode as well. And it's a very small part of this episode, but I really appreciated it. We see that him and Jeanette are close again. They meet up after her first day in court and he's really supportive. He also goes over to Ben's and and apologizes to Ben. He takes full accountability for what he did for causing that accident. And he says to Ben that Vince didn't actually do anything wrong. And this kind of inspires Ben to go to the video store and he apologizes to Vince saying that he was punishing the wrong person. He admits that he was terrified, but Vince is obviously still hurt because he feels as though Ben just tossed him aside. Ben says that he really wants to earn Vince's trust back and I think they'll eventually be okay. We also get a pretty big moment where Jeanette and Kate eventually meet. Kate asks Jeanette to meet at Martin's house and Jeanette says that, well, it's obvious that your case is falling apart and that's why you're reaching out. Kate is upset because her travel logs were put out there in court and kind of blindsided her and she blames Jeanette for stealing her life. But Jeanette says that it's not as though Kate wanted her old life anyway. Kate tells Jeanette that she knows that she broke in on Christmas Eve and they replay that evening on Christmas when Kate made the call, Jeanette broke in. It still doesn't seem as though Jeanette saw Kate though because Kate was hiding behind the wall and she only came out once Jeanette went out. Kate admits that she heard Jeanette's voice but she didn't actually make eye contact because it was dark and Jeanette had a hood on. She said that she did see Jeanette's bike though and it had a sticker on it. Turns out this was actually Mallory's bike. So, it was Mallory who was also there that night and she saw Jeanette break in and she wanted Jeanette to get caught. She waited until Jeanette left. That's when Kate, thinking it was Jeanette, actually saw Mallory. Once again, her face was covered, it was in a hood, so she couldn't tell. And at this point, I wasn't really sure whether Mallory saw Kate. In 1993, Mallory confronts Jeanette after the snow globe break-in and she feels that Jeanette is kind of a hypocrite because she'd been saying all along that she doesn't want to do the list anymore. Meanwhile, she's still breaking into Martin's house behind their backs. Jeanette gives the globe to Mallory in irritation just to get Mallory to leave her alone. Jeanette tells Kate that Mallory probably kept the globe and didn't say anything to protect Kate. Jeanette then asks Kate about what happened between her and Martin and Kate says that they were friends, he was kind to her, but it eventually escalated after the first night she'd slept over. There's just one thing that she can't remember and she wants some help unlocking her memory and she asks Jeanette to go down to the basement with her to help her. She begins to tell the story that we all know, that the night before she was rescued, Martin came down and something was different. We also see a stain on the floor and eventually the rest of the story unravels. She said that Martin was vulnerable and she thought that he'd finally worked up the courage to kill her. Martin, standing in front of her, lies, I think, 
that the police did come to the house and they're likely going to come back with a search warrant. Then he shows her a family heirloom named Annabelle, the gun that his father used to take his life. He apologizes to Kate and in a twist tells Kate that she could leave and see the world and he puts the gun to his own head but he's unable to go through with it and he drops the gun and has a meltdown. Kate picks up the gun and he tries to manipulate her into not shooting him. It doesn't work though and she shoots him. I hated that she had to deal with this trauma on top of everything else but good. Jeanette asks the question that we're all wondering at this point, but didn't Martin get killed in a shootout? I didn't really get Kate's answer here. She says that they assume that because Martin was shot, but okay. Eventually, Kate tells a group of reporters outside of the courthouse that Jeanette didn't see her. Kate also confronts Mallory about seeing her, and she wants an explanation. Mel says that she figured it was Martin's girlfriend or sister. I mean, the last thing she was expecting to see was Kate in the window. It didn't make sense for Kate to be missing, but being in the living room of Martin's house, making a call. She only put, really put two and two together when Kate's rescue report came out on the news and she wanted to protect Kate. If she admitted that she was at the house, then she'd also be admitting to the world that Kate was there and she wasn't locked in the basement. Mel says that she's leaving town. She's distraught about all of this but Kate says no you don't have to go and they make up. They end up going for a drive together, they're dancing in the streets free from their secrets and they kiss. Next it's Jeanette's turn to be on TV. She gets invited to the Marsha Bailey show and she gets an apology from Marsha Bailey herself. Jeanette shows appreciation for her dad and her boyfriend and she looks at the camera and she says that she forgives Kate. The final scene is Jeanette going into Martin's house one other time and we hear Kate shouting for help from the basement. Jeanette hears her too. It's clear who she is. Kate says, I am Kate Wallace. Jeanette hears her and ignores her. I mean, she makes a move to open the basement door but she doesn't and that's the end of the episode and now for my thoughts I don't have many except that this is why Jeanette was able to lie with such a straight face because she didn't technically see Kate she just heard her I absolutely did not see this coming I always thought that there would be some kind of misunderstanding and that there would be no way that Jeanette could be this sociopathic as to leave Kate in captivity for months without saying anything I'm glad that Kate and Mallory find her kind of creepy still, so they'll stay away from her. But poor Jamie, who I've forgiven, by the way, I wasn't really sure if I was that invested anymore in the Annabelle reveal. So by the time it was revealed, I just kind of, that just left me cold. I was like, okay, fine, it's a gun. I was truly disgusted by Martin's performance towards the end with Annabelle. I guess that it was just all a performance and he wasn't in any way remorseful because he just quickly switched as soon as he saw that Kate had the gun on him. It would have been nice to see Derek one last time this episode. But other than that, I'm really satisfied with this ending. I do hope that this is a limited series and this is all we're going to get though because I'm happy with where the story ends. Anyway, that's it for this video. Feel free to share your thoughts down below and thank you for watching.